anyone he, must, he might choose to send forth to preach his word. What does God do to anyone he might choose to send forth to preach his word? Let's answer that question first before we go forward. We read it in the Bible passage. The person he chooses to send forth to preach his word, what does God first do to that person? To ordain him, yeah. to call him for instruction, to teach him that person. You know, that's what he thought does. Say, God makes no mistakes. He will not send out a man he has not made ready for the tax. The place where he makes men is at his feet, where his servants learn of him. At his feet, in the word of God, in a quiet place. Say, we see Mary, who sat at the feet of Jesus to learn of him, of whom the Lord said, but one thing is needful, and Mary has chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. So to us today, what is the first thing that is needful for us? What is that first thing that is needful as a child of God, as a believer? That what is one thing that is needful for us? To learn at the feet of Jesus. So Mary has chosen that one thing that is needful first, like we had this morning. That one thing first, all other things will follow. Say so God approves a workman, irrespective of gender or age, whatever, he approves anyone that stay with him, that learn of him, who is able to rightly divide the word of truth. Second Timothy 2.15. 2 Timothy 2.15 said, Study and do your best to present yourself to God, approved a workman tested by trials, who has no reason to be ashamed, accurately handling and skillfully teaching the word of truth. You know, some trials could not be that big trials, trials of your patience, trials of your humility. You know, those are trials that come rightly approve a workman tested by trials, has no reason to be ashamed, accurately, accurately handling and skillfully teaching the word of God. But what I can see is the, uh, our own problem is the way we handle the word of God. Sometimes we handle it like an unwise person. We handle it in self. We handle it with emotion and feelings, but that is not the word of God. You know, so he said we should handle it carefully and skillfully teaching it. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. So this means that a workman who is not approved of God will wrongly divide the word of truth. So when the word comes, you might wrongly divide it and say this word. Why is this word coming out? Or is it me, this word? That's why we handle it in flesh or in pride. How then does a workman become approved unto God? What does God do to, to his workman before they qualify to be sent out to preach? This study will help us see what God is looking for and how he makes his workmen worthy of preaching the word of life effectively. We have two lesson outlines. One say, call to be with him first and fit for God's use. The first one say, call to be with him first. That the Lord expects those he uses to first be with him as their primary calling. We must first be with him, learn from him, learn his word, receive instructions, you know. I say, I say, as they learn of him, he makes them and then decide whether to send them out to preach. Say so whether or not to send when we learn of him. So he first called his disciples to be with him in fellowship and communion. Luke 5, 10 to 11. Luke 5, 10 to 11. Say, and so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. 
So they pulled their boats up on the shore, left everything, and followed him. That was when he called them. He said, don't worry, come to me. So they left what they're doing, and they followed him to go and learn from him. So after a while of growth and development, he sent them out to preach, heal, and cast out demons. So after a while that they've been with him, they've been learning from him, They've learned instructions. He has teach them the word, how to be, you know, they've learned of his attitude, his way of life. Then Luke 9, 1 to 7 said, he sent them out. Luke 9, 1 to 7. When Jesus has called the 12 together, he gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. He told them, take nothing for the journey. No staff, no bag, no bread, no money, no extra shirts. Whatever house you enter, stay there until you leave that town. If people do not welcome you, leave their town and shake the dust of, off your feet as a testimony against them. So they sat out and went from village to village, proclaiming the good news and healing people everywhere. The last now Herod the Tetra heard about all that was going on and he was perplexed because some were saying that John had been raised from the dead. So, you know, he gave them and they went out to do the commission. So they came back rejoicing with great resort because they've been with him and he has given them the authority. With, they came back with great results, as demons were subject to them. So if we've been with them, we have great results in our work with him, in our way of life, in our attitude. Even the service that we do will have great results because we've learned from him. So, but the Lord pointed out that their rejoicing should rather be that their names are written in the book of life. Luke 10, 20. Luke 10, 20 said we should read. however do not rejoice that the spirit submit to you but rejoice that your names are written in heaven so of all the rejoicing that we do even with those great results like you learned this morning we should be conscious of our heaven we should be conscious that not that the service alone that our name is written in the book of life so the Lord is looking for men and women who can be with him, not those who can do things for him. Thank God we can do things for him, but he wants us first to be with him, to learn from him, to receive instruction, not only to do things for him. So for someone's name to be written in the book of life, being with Jesus and being personally known by him is a prerequisite is a prerequisite. You know, when we learn of him, when we be with him, we have his character. His life is now in us. So this is a prerequisite. So many do things in his name without him knowing them. It's knowing them. They will confront him on that. They're saying they preach and heal in, in his name where he will say he never knew them. Matthew 7, 22 to 23. So many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evil doers. So they were wicked in their ways. But they were doing the miracles where God honored his name. His name needs to be glorified. So he honor his name for people to be saved, to be delivered. And so when they think in the service, the Lord is honoring them, there is manifestation, demons are living, you know, people are being healed. But they are, they are not with him. They have no, 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 no relationship with him. He, don't, he doesn't know them because they were doing wickedly. They were doing, they are workers of iniquity. Some of, you know, I, like this example that came to me is like a woman and, a, uh, and a, the wife. Maybe the man is a preacher, but wickedly, he, he is wicked to the wife at home. But when he comes, he preaches the word of God. He's a man of iniquity. But God honors 
He, 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 he disregards the command of God as he loves your wife, as I have loved the church. But he will come and preach. The God will honor his name to deliver the people in bondage. So that's why. But then, because those miracles were going on, they forget and they continue in their ways. So what does it mean to be with the Lord? It means to come aside from busy schedules of life, to study and meditate the word of God, to be in a place of prayer. So we need to go. Yes, we are busy like we are today. We are busy like Imam was telling me. Yeah, you could be busy with your career. You could be busy with so many things. Have your house. Enjoy. Go on holiday. Yes, do it. But you must not forget to go out of that busy schedules to study and meditate on the word of God and to pray to make your life better because there's no other life apart from the life that is in Christ Jesus. So call to communion. Call to communion. So being with the Lord requires being wanting. To commune with the Lord, sorry, is to have a dialogue with him and reason together in discussion as Moses did in Exodus 24:18 and Exodus 31:18. Then Moses entered the cloud as he went up the mountain and he stayed on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. You know, sometimes it requires fasting. It requires, you know, retreats, going on a retreat to see what the Lord is saying, to commune and dialogue with him. And after that, Exodus 31, 18 says, Exodus 31, so when the Lord finished speaking to Moses on Mount Sinai, he gave him the two tablets of the covenant law, the tablets of stone inscribed by the finger of God. So when we come aside to commune with him, to dialogue, we have revelation, we have him speak to us, to help us in the journey. And the second one says, make a priority, the one thing that is needful, which we all call us today, this morning, that one thing that is needful for us is the word of God, to be with him, to study at his feet and learn from him. So being with the Lord requires one thing, persistently sitting at his feet to learn of him, more than you would of any other person. So Mary prioritized this, despite being called to do other urgent things, this must be our daily pursuit too. So there was urgency to make food for our Lord Jesus Christ, you know, to do things for him. But he said, I will learn from him first. And then later, we can go and uh, make the food for him. So, so even from any other person, like uh, Apostle Yinka, when he came then, he said, she said there's a time she had a friend that they spent hours on phone just talking and talking and talking. And at a point in time, her spirit rose and said, this shouldn't be. And then she cut off the friend. So that will be with other people we should prioritize despite our busy schedules. And the Lord will give us more understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. The second outline says, fit for God's use. The only life that can preach the word of God is one who bears the life of Christ. Matthew 18, 28 to 29. Matthew 18. Come to me, all, who, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you find rest for your souls. This is a very prerequisite uh, for us as a child of God to learn from him. He said he's gentle and humble in heart. It's a very prerequisite thing for us as a child of God. Only Christ in an individual can preach the word of God effectively. Jesus calls to anyone struggling with the issues of daily life to come to him first for rest by receiving his life. You know, sometimes we struggle with so many things but because we've not allowed the word of God, Christ himself, to help us. So he's now calling, come and learn from me first. Be humble and make him. Say, after this, you should begin to 
began the learning of him by taking his yoke or burden of responsibility for the kingdom of God, not for self, for kingdom. The learning of Christ means learning his life of gentleness, meekness, and loneliness of heart, which as a child of God is like is everything that we struggle with, that gentleness, that meekness, and that loneliness. If we don't come to that point of being meek, of being lonely in heart, humble, gentleness, we might not enjoy the fullness of that life of Christ. Sometimes we just struggle and struggle. We struggle, we go back, we say, oh, this can't be. But when we learn that loneliness, that meekness, that humility, we'll be able to enjoy, and then our life will bring forth that life of Christ. Our attitude, our ways of life will change. Say, by so doing, we become effective ministers of God's work, like Apostle Paul says in Galatians 2.20. So I have been crucified with Christ, and I no, I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live now, in the body, I live by the faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. You know, he learned so many things through trials, through tribulation, through so many things. He learned the life of Christ, to be humble, to be meek, and he continued for the kingdom. He did not go back, even all through the trials. So he said, now say, the life that he lives, he lives in, this, in the world. He lives by Christ, the, the world. That's why he's living. And so he, he no longer lives in the flesh, but by faith that he has called him. Christ himself is the word of life. Without him indwelling, in a preacher or is a worker, as we, we, we not even a preacher alone, as a worker, if that word, Christ, is not indwelling in us, that may, there's no way such preaching of the word of life can shine forth with the light of spiritual life, inheritant in the world, in a darkness that continues to hold people bound. John 1, 1 to 5. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. Let's stay there. Say, in him was life. In this Word is life, and that life, that Word is our light, is the light of all mankind. So for everyone that come to Christ has found life, and which is that life? The eternal life. Yes, we have the life, like we, uh, the life of the, he said he has gotten life now. But he forgot the life of eternity. So he said, let me rest and have my own. He said, that life is the light of all mankind. This light, this life is our light. It's the light that shines in us. Say, so let your light so shine that people may see it and glorify you. Let your attitude, your way of life change and people will see you and glorify our Father. The last one, five. Say, so the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. And so as this light shines, God, darkness will never overcome it. It will never. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. And in conclusion, say the only way a man can preach the word of God, a man can be of service to the Lord, not only preaching, is forced to allow Jesus Christ to break his word into our lives in the place of communion and study of the word. Say without Christ's life in us, there's no way we can serve God. Second Timothy 2.15, still go back to that, telling us that we should make our duty is our duty. Second Timothy, do your best. Formula, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, as a worker who does not need to be ashamed, a worker, not a preacher alone, and who correctly handles the word of truth. How do we undo the word of truth? 
the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. The onus is on us as we had. We need to make a choice. We need to desire, decide it. The, the spirit in us should, you know, should rise up. That No, I don't want to be the same. I don't want to continue to... I need to grow spiritually, not to handle it as a baby. I want to break it. I want to say we grow from baby to the adult, to breaking the word of God, you know, knowing it well, standing up for it, not to be in the flesh. When we be in the, and that is that loneliness, meekness, and humility. I'm telling you, I've been there. If you don't come to that end of learning that loneliness, that meekness, you know, that humility will struggle. We are still in the flesh. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And our spirit man will be quickening us to say no to the flesh in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Is there any question we need we want to ask? Or we want to add to it? Let's let's pray. Let's just appreciate God. Say Father, I thank you for today. Thank you for teaching me your word. Thank you for sending your word to me. I appreciate you, our Father and our God. Pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that I'll be a wise person. I will choose to study. I will choose to commune with the, with the word, to stay apart in the name of Jesus. Our Father and our God, we say thank you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We say thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord.